Decades of research make it clear. Not all exercises were created equal for muscle growth. If you're in the gym and putting in the work, but not using the right exercises, you're leaving most of your potential gains on the table. It's not your fault. Everyone online has a different best exercise list, which makes it virtually impossible to know which ones truly work. You deserve to know which lifts actually build muscle, not just the ones that look cool on Instagram. So by the end of today's video, you'll not only know which exercises are actually backed by science to build muscle, but what exercises are actually best for your body. So you can walk into each and every gym session confident that you're actually growing. First, let's set some criteria for what makes an exercise the best. Back in 2010, researchers identified that metabolic stress, mechanical tension, and muscle damage were potential factors contributing to muscle growth. Later work clarified this, emphasizing that mechanical tension and progressive overload or mechanical overload were the primary drivers for growth. Put simply, muscle growth depends on how hard you push a muscle group during a set and how much you can progress on your sets week to week. So really, the best exercises are the ones that make that possible. Thankfully for us, researchers also provided some guidelines that we can use to help us pick our best exercises. First, it must use a decent range of motion and be loaded effectively. This basically just means we need to train muscles through their appropriate ranges and be able to load them where they produce the most force, usually in the length and position. Second, the exercise must be challenging in a moderate rep range. This basically basically just means it's hard to finish within one to three reps shy of failure in a rep range that you can also load and control. Anywhere between six to 10 or 15 reps seems to be fine for this. Third, it must be progression friendly. It needs to be easy to track and actually progress on this exercise over time, whether by adding load or reps or both. Fourth, stability. The setup should be stable enough so that the target muscle, not your balance or grip, is the limiting factor in the movement. So with these guidelines, it seems like picking the best exercises would be easy. But fortunately for us, it's not that simple. Science does give us the broad rules of what we should be following in order to get the most muscle growth possible, but really the best exercises will come down to you. Specific limb lengths, tendon insertions and joint angles influence which lifts feel most effective for you. While your injury history shapes not just what is best, but what is safest for you. All it really comes down to is adherence in the long term. So your best exercise for a given muscle group is the one that follows the muscle building principles, but is also safe and comfortable for you to keep performing over time. And now we know how to define the best exercises. Let's run through my top best for each muscle group according to the science. We'll run through lower body first and then move on to upper body and abs. First, let's start with quads. The quad's main role is knee extension or straightening the knee, while the rectus femoris also plays a role in hip flexion. They're made up of four heads, the vastus lateralis, the vastus medialis, intermedius and the rectus femoris. The vastus lateralis, medialis and intermedius are all hit effectively in squat pattern movements, especially with deep knee flexion. The rectus femoris, however, also benefits from more direct work given its additional role in hip flexion. For this reason, we'll be picking two best exercises for the quads. First, the pendulum squat. Unlike the barbell squat, this bad boy follows a fixed arc and lets you drive deep into knee flexion with high quad loading whilst reducing the demand on your hips and lower back. But before you start screaming at me, I know that most gyms don't have this puppy. So as an alternative, I would either just use the plain old back squat or the Smith machine squat instead. Hack squats are also a good alternative, but they can be a pain on the knees for a lot of people. So I would take that into consideration when choosing your alternative. Secondly, the leg extension. This isolates the quads in their shortened position, letting you target the rectus femoris efficiently and train all four heads. And next up, glutes. The glutes are made up of three main muscles, the maximus, medius, and minimus. The glute max is the largest of the three and makes up the bulk of the shape of your bum. Its main role is to extend the hip or move your leg behind you, as well as externally rotate your hip and stabilize your pelvis and trunk when you're moving or balancing. 
Like most muscle groups, the glutes benefit from being trained in both the lengthened and shortened position. For this reason, I have three best glute exercises. Let's start off strong in the shortened position with the hip thrust. This one is most challenging at the top of the movement near full hip extension and is ideal for progressive overload due to its stability and ease for tracking your load progression over time. You can use a barbell or a machine for this one, it's really up to you, but machines like the Booty Builder or even the Smith Machine do provide a little bit more stability. But if you're a hip thrust hater or have any nagging injuries that prevent you from thrusting, then the 45 degree hyper extension is a great alternative with a nice knee bend. Secondly, let's move on to training the length and position with the Romanian deadlift. Unlike the hip thrust, the RDL loads the hinge in the lengthened range. Although research does show that squats are a great choice here for targeting glutes in the lengthened position, and probably the logical choice, I personally would pick the RDL over the squat due to the RDL's lack of quad involvement and for the fact that they teach you the hip hinge, something that carries over into other glute movements such as the hip thrust, split squat or the lunge. To help cue this movement, think about spreading the floor apart with your feet or spreading your butt cheeks side to side. And finally, for a little bit more medius and minimus work, the best exercise here would simply be abduction on the machine. It's stable, easy to load, and relatively easy to track your progression on. If I didn't have one of these, I would try and do a cable abduction instead. Ooh, I'm sweating. Next up, hamstrings. Our hamstrings are made up of three main muscles and work both to bend the knee and extend the hip. My top pick for this would be the seated leg curl. You could also pick the lying leg curl if you prefer, but one study showed that the seated leg curl produced 55% more growth than the lying leg curl, so we'll be sticking with the seated leg curl on this one. And last, but by no means least, we have calves. Now, some people will probably argue that calves are purely genetic, so there's no point training them. But despite what your local gym bro may think, calves do in fact respond to training, with gains in both the gastrocnemius and the soleus being comparable to what we'd expect in arms or quads. So, train your calves. The most superficial or surface level calf muscle is the gastrocnemius, the muscle that looks a little bit like a pee pee when you flex. Its main role is plantar flexion or pointing your toes and takes up most of the bulk of your lower leg. It also helps in bending the knee but produces less force when the knee is bent. For this reason, the best exercise that I would pick to grow the gastroc would be the standing calf raise. This exercise helps keep the knee extended, biasing the gastroc effectively. And now we're done with our lower body work, we can finally start on upper body. Let's start with abs, work our way up and then around to our back. The main muscle responsible for that six pack look is the rectus abdominis. Given that the main function of this muscle is spinal flexion or bringing your rib cage towards your pelvis, our best exercise will train the abs within that movement. For this, I'd pick the weighted crunch. For simplicity, I would do this on the crunch machine or on a cable, but if your gym doesn't carry a cable machine or a crunch machine, I'd simply start by crunching on a bench and then add weight to my hands over time to progress. Moving up, let's hit chest. The main muscle here is the pectoralis major with its upper, clavicular and lower sternal portions. This pushes, hugs and rotates the arm inward with the upper chest also helping in raising your arm forward or up. The best exercise I would pick for this would be the incline machine press. I'd pick incline over the flat chest press here just because research has shown that incline press does show higher activation in the upper chest region whilst also eliciting similar muscle growth to the flat bench. If you don't have a machine, I would simply opt for the incline dumbbell press or the incline press on the Smith machine. Or if you're gymless, push-ups work too. Next up, shoulders, or delts, to be nice and sciency. Your delts are made up of three main muscles, the front, side, and rear. Because the front delts often tend to be ridiculously overdeveloped in comparison to your side and rear delts, I would probably just stick to my chest press movement to hit them, and only toss in a shoulder press, either dumbbells or machines, if absolutely needed. Otherwise, the two best exercises that I would pick for the side and rear would be cable side laterals and cable rear delt flies. 
If I didn't have access to a cable, then the dumbbell alternative would be great for both exercises. Moving down the arm now, let's hit triceps. The triceps are made up of three main muscles with their primary role being to extend the forearm at the elbow joint or simply straighten your arm. The long head also crosses at the shoulder joint assisting in shoulder extension. This means that the exercise or exercises that we pick for the triceps will have to act on both the elbow and shoulder joint in order to train the triceps most effectively. For this reason, the best exercises that I would pick would be the tricep pushdowns and the overhead triceps tricep extensions. If those weren't an option, then I would go for a more upright dip, skull crusher, or even a close grip push-up with your hands nice and narrow to your body. Flipping round to our inner arm now, let's move on to the biceps. The biceps have two heads, working to supinate the forearm and flex the elbow, or simply twist your palm to face up. If I could pick one singular bicep exercise, it would be the Bayesian bicep curl. I set these up on a cable pulley with cuffs, taking a few steps forward to make sure my arms are behind me, locking my elbows in place, and thinking about curling my forearm to meet my bicep. If I didn't have a pulley, I would probably either do the preacher curls or alternating dumbbell curls with supination instead. Research has shown little to no difference in bicep growth between the Bayesian curl and the preacher curl, so really just pick the one you prefer. And last, but by no means least, let's jump around our torso and hit some back. Very, very simply, the back can be divided into three main sections. The upper back, including traps, lats, and lower back. Each section performs its own functions, namely pulling your shoulder blades back and moving them up, down, and together, as well as pulling the arms down, back, and rotating them inward, and also working to stabilize and extend the spine. So to grow, we need exercises that leverages and trains each section efficiently. For this reason, I'm going to go with two best exercises. The chest supported roll with elbows flared for the upper back and the pull up or the pull down. The reason why I'm not picking an exercise here for our lower back is because it does get some work during our hinging movements and we already have the RDL in our best exercises list. If you don't have a chest supported rowing machine, then dumbbells and a bench to mimic the machine's movement also works great here. Now, I know that was a lot to take in. So the big question is, how can we actually implement this into our own training? It's simple. Pick a menu of best exercises or their variations for each muscle group. Follow the muscle building markers from before, solid mechanical tension, good range of motion, load ability and enjoyability. Slot one or two of your picks into your sessions for each muscle group or each half of the body depending on what your split looks like. Train each muscle group around two to three times per week. Track your load and your reps, aiming to progress on that over time and staying around one to three reps shy of failure. Only swap your exercises in or out when they start to get stale or your enjoyment for them fades, but try and stick with those exercises that you initially picked for at least three to six months. Once you do that, you'll have your full routine mapped out nicely with all your best exercises for you to build muscle. But if you are not interested in building your own routine and for some reason you're still sticking around to the end of this video, I'll also link my pre-made plans in the description to make the whole process a little bit easier for you. I really hope you guys find this video helpful. Please let me know down below if you did. Don't forget to like and subscribe while you're down there and join us pookies. Hopefully I will catch you guys in my next one.